Ah, Halloween, the day where Catholics prepare for the holiest time of the year, the day when the secular world goes out and tries to scare the bejesus out of each other, and the day where Protestants bow down before the icon of the Antichrist, Martin Luther. And such is the case with Todd Friel of Wretched Radio. And of course, leading up to the famous Reformation Day, Todd Friel put out a bunch of videos attacking Mother Church. So sit back, have a pint, and get ready to have your mind blown, you filthy Catholic. Here at Wretched, we understand if a man commits a boo-boo, a hiccup, a mistake, we can overlook those things. That's not a bad example, Todd, but I have an even better one from your very own pastor, John MacArthur. Your forgiveness of mistakes brings a tear to me eye. But centuries of violent, bloody, torturous, hideous behavior by one man. <laughs> oh, oh, cool your jets there, Todd. James White hasn't been alive that long. I'm talking about the office of the papacy. Oh, right. Of course. The papacy. It is a bloody history. Not to excuse the evil done by men, but what part of history isn't bloody? And as we take a tour through the centuries to see how the supposed vicar on Christ behaved, we are forced to ask the question, is he really the vicar of Christ? Yes. Yes, he is. It doesn't take too long of reading the Bible to see that he's made mistakes from the very beginning. Please note... Mom and Dad, this might not be appropriate for children. Watch your profanity. Consider what I just said. We're going to do the history of the papacy in the Roman Catholic Church. You can just say church. And your kids probably shouldn't hear it because it's not age appropriate. Boy, that joke got funnier as it went on. Thanks, Todd. And here we go. 769, Pope Stephen the IV. Huh. Wow, 769? I guess the papacy was pretty awesome the first 700 years, huh? Came to power with the help of an army. Conquering the previous pope, Stephen gave orders for the old guy to be flogged, have his eyes cut out, have his kneecaps busted. He was Italian. And be imprisoned until he died. Then the new pope sentenced a second man to die a very painful, agonizing death. He had pieces of his body cut off every day until he finally died. I told you this might not be appropriate. So what's missing here? Context. First and foremost, the pope he usurped is an anti-pope, Constantine II, who was installed in opposition to the church by Roman noblemen. And yes, it took the Lombard army to drive out the false pope. But this is no different than when David overthrew the false king Absalom and retook his city of Jerusalem. And though these actions may be distasteful by our modern sensibilities, when you compare these actions to the actions of the kings and the judges throughout the Old Testament, these things would be expected and considered just. Pope Stephen the V. Eight, yes, I'm going to do this the entire time. 896 through 897. He was so agitated with his predecessor. He felt he'd been wronged. So he decided, what else should a pope do but retaliate, even though the guy was dead? So he tried a dead man for his crimes and ordered his nine-month-old corpse to be exhumed, dressed in sacred papal robes, and propped on a throne in the courtroom. Pope Stephen then ordered his reign void, chopped off three fingers of the dead man that he used to give blessings with, and ordered the body to be stripped of its robes and dumped in a cemetery for foreigners. So this was most likely an unfortunate political move. Much like when the very first pope, St. Peter, who's written about extensively in the Bible, 
he chose to fraternize with the Judaizers, who said that you had to be circumcised in order to be saved, rather than simply preach the gospel to the Greeks. Now, is Todd going to mention that this same Pope Stephen opposed slavery? That he had compassion for the plight of the Christians in Islamic countries? That he gave away his own family's fortune to help the poor and needy? No, of course not. That's not very scandalous. You want to kiss that man's ring? Yep. Pope Leo the V, I told you, only reigned for a month. July 903, Cardinal Christopher put Leo in prison and became Pope. Then Christopher was put in prison by Cardinal Sergius. Sergius killed Leo and Christopher while they were in prison. He also killed every cardinal who had opposed him. Nice guy. So again, this sounds very similar to what we have with kings like David and Solomon, who were considered to be holy men of God, but still fallible men. It should not be shocking to Todd that holy men are capable of doing evil things. What should be shocking is that despite all that evil, God preserved his church. 1096, Roman Catholic crusaders slaughter half the Jews in Worms, Germany. And this event is terribly tragic and horrific. And as a German, I can say that Germany's had an anti-Semitism problem for its entire history. But to tie this to the papacy is completely wrong. In fact, the local bishop had given asylum to the Jews. These attacks were perpetrated by bloodthirsty savages. 1098, Roman Catholic crusaders slaughter almost every single inhabitant of the city of Antioch. Again, this tells us much more about the brutal reality and the evils of war than it does about the papacy or about the church. Because this was done in the heat of battle, with combat within the city, and there was an equal number of Christians as Muslims that were killed. And these sort of atrocities can happen even today, perhaps not on the scale, but it's not unheard of for young and experienced soldiers to lose that chain of command, for the heat of battle to get to them, and civilians end up getting killed. This is not meant to excuse these things, but to point to a reality outside of the church. The Albigensian Crusades, these were nasty. Southern France, Roman Catholic Crusaders slaughtering, give or take 20,000 citizens. Again, there's a lot to unpack here. First and foremost, Todd relies on modern sensibilities to make his point. But when things like this occur in the Bible, he's quick with an excuse. That said, Pope Innocent was opposed to this sort of behavior. Although he recognized the need to stop their insane heresies from spreading. But by that point, when this all occurred, it had become a political French crusade and was no longer a true crusade of the church. July 22, 1209. By the time the Roman Catholic armies finished their crusade, almost the entire population of southern France, mostly Albigensian Christians, had been... I've already addressed a few times now the brutality of things occurring like that. So I won't go over that again here. But I will point out that if they had done any research on Wretched at all, they would have not called them Christians. Even a Google search or Wikipedia entry would have told them how not Christian these people were. They denied the Incarnation. They were Gnostic. They believed that material was bad. They believed that the God of the Old Testament was evil. They believed that God had seduced Satan's wife and slept with her. Like, The insanity that these people believed, despite being the truest form of Christianity, Todd refuses to call Catholics Christian. But he'll call these people Christians? 1236, Roman Catholic Crusaders slaughter Jews in the Anjou and Poitou regions of western France. The Catholic Crusaders trample to death. Under their horses, 3,000 Jewish people. Now, Todd, you don't get to feign outrage over this event if you're laughing at the idea of Jews getting trampled. People who refuse to be baptized into the Roman Catholic system. According to Friel, this video was supposed to be about the papacy. So why does he keep bringing up things that untrained peasants trying to play army committed? Because that's ultimately what all this has been. 
the untrained crusaders who attacked. It typically wasn't the knights and the trained soldiers doing this. It was the peasant rabble that went with them. And according to the Jewish virtual library, if I'm reading it correctly, it sounds like Gregory the Ninth condemned this. 1298, Pope Boniface. His namesake, St. Boniface, is one of the greatest missionaries of all time. Don't even go to the name mocking, Todd. I know you're better than this. Ordered that every man, woman, child, and animal in the Italian town of Palestrina slaughtered. He was known for torture, massacre, and being downright nasty. Although this was one of several wars this pope was engaged in, I can't find anything so dramatic about it. And as far as how cruel he may have been, I don't see any evidence that he was more or less cruel than any other monarch living in the world at the time. 1298, Roman Catholic mobs burn alive all Jews in Rottingen, Germany. So I'm going to go ahead and skip quite a few of these that Todd himself describes as being mobs. Anything involving mobs is not going to be relevant to a particular cause. The riots of the summer of 2020 were not indicative of all Democrats. The mob chaos of 2021 was not indicative of all Republicans. The fact is, what the mob does is purely what the mob does. 1481, at the direction of the Roman Catholic Inquisitors, authorities burn at the stake at least 2,000 people during the first two years of the Inquisition. Well, Dr. Kamen of the University of Wisconsin puts the entire number of people burned at the stake through the Inquisition at about 3,000. Considering the Inquisition lasted for several hundred years, this is a classic anti-Catholic exaggeration. 1550, Roman Catholic troops slaughter 250,000 Dutch Protestants, torture, hanging, burn. I want to stop him right here and skip ahead, go past a bunch of these things that he points out, because, yes, atrocities were committed by people on both sides. In every single cause ever, atrocities have been committed. The Protestants, they took money from the church. They raped the nuns, they killed the priests, they killed the friars and the monks. In England, the birthplace of so many different American denominations, including Todd Friels, they burn Catholics for being Catholics. I bring this up to point out that it's not fair to just point out at things happening on one side and not looking in the mirror. People do evil things. We are fallen. We have a corrupted nature. And it's only by God's grace that we can do good and come to him. And I'm going to leave it at that. Because no matter how many atrocities Protestants may have committed, it's irrelevant to whether or not their claims are truth. And that's what I want to focus on. 1618, the Thirty Years' War, the bloody religious war planned, instigated, orchestrated by the Roman Catholic Jesuit system. It's always the Jesuits. But seriously. It was literally the Protestants who overthrew the Catholic king of Bohemia and installed a Protestant puppet. That's why the war started. I'm not trying to just point fingers at the other side. This is just straight history. 1641. Eight years of Jesuit instigated. It's always the Jesuits. That is how the papal Roman Catholic system has behaved throughout the ages. Well, you only gave a few popes as examples, and mostly you gave mobs as examples. And you even missed some really good ones, like Alexander IV. Now, I will grant you, we do not see that sort of bloody behavior today. But it raises the question, especially if you're Roman Catholic... Am I really putting my trust in a system that is godly? Yep. That has an unbroken succession of popes? Yep. That demonstrates that the pope really is the vicar of Christ on earth, and it is his system that I must go through in order to inherit eternal life? I agree here. The answer is no. It's the system that Christ put in place. Please, my Roman Catholic friend, consider the bloody history of the papistry. If you're looking for any group, religious or otherwise, that has absolutely no blood on its hands anywhere in its history, you're never going to belong to any group, ever. Again, 
We're all fallen. That includes the vicar of Christ. He's still a fallen man. He's not perfected simply because the Holy Spirit chose him to be Pope. I mean, as I pointed out earlier, John MacArthur himself, Todd Friel's pastor, has covered up sexual abuse, has called out victims of sexual abuse from the pulpit by name. It was the Baptist denomination that fought the very hardest to keep slavery legal in the United States. And today they're the biggest denomination in the country. There is blood on every group's hands. What matters is, do they have the truth? Find yourself a Bible teaching church. Yeah, go to Mass. You will hear more scripture there than you will hear in a month in most Protestant churches. And welcome to Grace Alone, Faith Alone, Christ Alone, Revealed in Scripture Alone. As interpreted by John MacArthur alone, for the glory of John MacArthur alone. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. If you didn't like it, go ahead and give me a thumbs down and leave a comment anyway. Let me know why. And maybe even hate watch me for a little while. As always, thank you, patrons. I couldn't do this without you. If you want to be a patron, get some cool merch and be part of the team, the link is down below. Until next time, and remember, go to Mass.